Hello everybody. So welcome back to the lecture today. Uh, I decided to add another part two of the Shiri Shant configuration uh, feedback and Hello everybody. Welcome back to our lecture today. I decided to add another part two of the Siri Shunt configuration feedback amplifier since we didn't actually go through a very detailed example of this uh, configuration of the feedback amplifier. So let's get to this. But first of all, warning this is going to be a very long, long video. So let's look at this example. This is basically a two-stage BJT, including a feedback network. So you can see we have a first stage in here with uh, one BJT, and we have the second stage. Then we have our feedback network of our RF1 and RF2. Okay. There are several uh, capacitors in here. There are actually six of them. Okay. The first, the first. The first one is the the first the first one is input coupling capacitor. Then you have another output coupling capacitor. You also have an interstage capacitor. Okay, and finally you have two bypass uh, emitter bypass capacitor. Uh, and also you have another coupling capacitor uh, for the feedback path. Uh, so in this example, uh, we're gonna assume that we have an identical transistor Q1 and transistor Q2 with beta 1 for transistor Q1 is 50 and beta 2 for transistor Q2 is also 50. Rx1 and Rx2 is gonna be 0. What is Rx? Rx is basically the resistance between the base of the terminal and the inner region of the base. So basically there's no current loss within the base terminal. So first we're going to do a quick DC analysis. So let's look at this first Q1. What do we see in the first day of transistor Q1? This is a CE amplifier, right? A common emitter because basically the ground is going to be torn here. Uh, when you do the DC analysis, what you want to do is you want to open circuit uh, everything, okay? So if you take out if you take if you take out the circuit, if you take out this uh, circuit as a standalone model, first what you can do is you can find you can look at this base branch in here. Uh, what you want to do is I want you to figure out the uh, the base what I, what I, what I want to say is uh, the base resistance which is going to be the R thevenin okay R thevenin will be equal to R1 parallel with R21 then you're going to have 36 kilo ohms next step you're going to want you want to do is you want to figure out the voltage applying on the base uh, the, the the voltage Basically applying on the on on to on the base resistance, uh, which is going to be the V thevenin. So technically, you convert this whole branch into a thevenin equivalent circuit. So the V thevenin will be equal to uh, VCC multiplied by R21 over R11 plus R21. So it's just one test divider law. I'm going to round it up to six volt. So now you have both the feminine resistance and voltage. What I want you to do next is figure out your quenching base current, uh, and that is by applying a loop analysis in here. So with that, you can have with that you can have uh, feminine one minus uh, VBE on over RTH. Uh, R thevenin one plus beta plus one R one 
plugging odd number that you know you're gonna have around uh, 19.2 microampere next uh, since you know the questions base current you can fi easily figure out the collector current by multiply base for beta now you can have 0 0.94 milliamp for your collector current so now you know the collector current uh, you can find the some of the transistor uh, what do I call it? some of the transistor parameter uh, such as GM and also RPi so basically the public pi equivalent parameter uh, so in order, to, in order to find GM you divide the tension point collector current for VT which is 0 0.26 at room temperature so you have 0 0.94 divided by, divided by 0 0.026 you're going to have uh, 36 milliampere over volt and likewise you can calculate uh, your RPi by divide, divide uh, VT for your quenching based current then you're going to have your RPi equal to 1.4 kilo ohm now repeat the same process with um, the second trans the second stage transistor Q2 you're gonna have your thevenin's resistance to be around 19 kilo ohms thevenin voltage is gonna be 10.3 volt you can find the base the quenching's base collector uh, current is gonna be 37 microamperes and the collect the uh, collector base the quenching's collector current is gonna be 1.85 milliampere. Uh, your transductant GM2 is gonna be 71 milliampere over volt and R pi 2 will be 0 0.7 kilo ohms. Now you need to redraw the circuit. So for so for the check of DC analysis you have to open off the capacitor right but also you if you ignore uh, if you want to fire basically um, uh, a mid band gain of this of this M basic amplifier in here you cannot ignore this feedback network even um, the reason why is this feedback network actually exert um, a loading effect loading effect on your emitter uh, so that open here So in this example here, we have a two-stage BJT amplifier. We have this is our first stage, and this is our second stage. We also have a feedback network. Okay, uh, and this feedback network also exerts some uh, loading effect um, onto the basic uh, amplifier circuit. We also have a bunch of capacitive component. Uh, we actually have six of them. We have a coupling uh, input coupling capacitor, interstage capacitor, output capacitor. I mean, I'm gonna highlight most of them here. An output capacitor. We we'll have a couple of pipe emitter bypass capacitor and a uh, feedback coupling capacitor. So let's assume that the two transistor Q1 and Q2 are identical. That that means the beta um, beta 1 of Q1 will be equal to beta 2 will be equal to 50 Rx which is the resistance between the the 
base terminal and the inner region of the base in the transistor um, we're gonna assume that resistance will be zero so that means there is no current loss within the base terminal itself so let's do some quick DC analysis to figure out the happy pi equivalent of the happy pi uh, equivalent parameter for this for the um, for the two amplifier that we have which is the first stage and the second stage so for the first stage which is in this green region here the first day we have the transistor Q1 right and this is a common emitter amplifier so what you want to do first is you want to convert this branch of the circuit into a, a base a branch by converting this circuit into a feminine equivalent so first of all uh, you figure out your um, feminine equivalent resistance which is going to be this parallel to this and you're going to have 36 kilo ohms then you're going to see what voltage would be applied into the base uh, through the feminine resistor uh, that's going to be your feminine voltage which is VCC 25 volt multiplied by R21 over R11 plus R21 plug off the number in you're going to round up to 6 volt so now knowing uh, R feminine and V feminine, what you want to do next is you want to figure out the quenchant based current. In order to do that, you want to set up a loop analysis in this loop. After doing the loop analysis, you can figure out the expression for your base quenchant based base current to be uh, V feminine one minus V B E on. Okay, over the um, over R TH one plus eta plus one R one. Then the result will give you nineteen point two microampere. Now, since you already know the base, the quenchant base current, you can easily calculate the quenchant collector current by multiplying uh, the base current for beta. Then you're gonna have 0 0.94 milliampere. Now you know the quenchant collector current, you can find the transconductance GM1 to be equal to 0 0.94 over 0 0.026, uh, and that's gonna be equal to um, 36 milliamp over volt. Likewise, you can calculate your R pi by using Vt, and Vt is always 0 0.026 at room temperature. Divide, divide that for IBQ1, you're going to have 1.4 kilo ohms. Now you do the same thing on the second stage. Calculate your R feminine and V feminine uh, for the second stage to be 19 kilo ohm and 10. Uh, 10.3 volt respectively now you can use the same method calculate your base uh, your base current to be 37 microampere at Q point and your collector current to be 1.85 milliampere at Q point you can now calculate your GM2 equal to 71 milliampere over volt and your R pi 2 equal to 0 0.7 kilo ohm Next, you need to redraw your circuit for uh, a for the DC analysis. Um, so, the, this the, this analysis you may you need that to uh, how can I say? Uh, not just DC analysis. You basically need analysis to uh, you need an analysis to to figure out the uh, the mid band gain of this basic amplifier. Okay, so you need to draw a circuit with all the capacitor sorted. Okay, uh, so now you may be attempt to just figure out the open loop gain of this basic amplifier, just within with only uh, 
the within only the green region alone however if you look at this feedback network actually this feedback network will act as the as um we have some loading effect that means there will the output resistance of this feedback network output resistance is here will act as loading effect onto the um, collector of q2 and the input resistance of this feedback network will act as uh, loading effect or some resistor that connected to the emitter of q1 so now if let's see uh, let's analyze let's use the two port model of the feedback network so the basic amplifier uh, the basic amplifier circuit with r11 is loading effect from the input resistance of feedback network y r22 is the loading effect from the output resistance of feedback network so if you see in here if i have the basic amplifier right um, basically when i do my uh, analysis to figure out the open loop gain i have to apply the loading effect um, from input resistance of feedback network in here and loading effect of output resistance from feedback network to here um, and the feedback network basically is a two port network so you can um, you can find your uh, R11 and you can find your R22 from this feedback network here um, your of course like you can also derive beta for the feedback network if you just do analysis to figure out what is the VF over VO is going to be Um, so let's consider the loading effect okay so I have ba basically here is the basic model and I have this is the cutout for your feedback network um, over here you have a VF and over here you have a VO right you can have your uh, input loading effect it's gonna be basically what you do is you connect you basically short this VO right you connect these two together then the resistance r11 uh, r11 i'm gonna call it r1 for the rest of the example it's gonna be equal to h11 on this uh, two port network parameter here and that's gonna be equal to rf1 parallel with rf2 because you already shorted out your vo and set vo equal zero so your result is going to be 0 0.096 kilo ohm. And in order to uh, figure out the loading effect for uh, on the from the output, basically you apply. Uh, so if you see this model in here, there's an independent current source, an dependent current source, right? So you apply a zero current in here. So that means now the, you can calculate your R2 uh, or H22 it's gonna be equal to RF1 plus RF2 and that's gonna be equal to 4.8 kilo ohms so now we can redraw our amplifier with loading effect so basically I put R1 which is 0.098 kilo ohms on the emitter side of Q1 and I'm gonna put R2 which is 4.8 kilo ohm on the collector side of Q2 uh, in here you can also use voltage divider uh, on this loop and if you use voltage divider on this loop you can see that VF is going to be equal to RF1 over sum of RF1 and RF2 multiplied by VO just voltage divider we know that for the feedback uh, for the feedback network VF is going to be equal to beta VO and beta is our feedback transfer function so we can calculate your feedback transfer function 
beta v to be rf1 over sum of rf1 and rf2 and it's gonna be 0 0.021 now we need to reconstruct the small signal equivalent circuit with loading effect to find the open loop gain okay so first we construct an AC equivalent circuit at mid band frequency including loading effect of feedback network which is this in here then we're gonna analyze um, the, this circuit to find the mid band gain uh, or the open loop gain so let's get to this here so now you have the equivalent circuit you know that okay if I want to find the mid band gain which is gonna be equal to VO over VS right so now I'm trying to relate everything together uh, so I can break this one into VO over VPI so find a relationship between VO and VPI2 then I'm gonna find relationship between VPI2 and VO1 which is here okay um, then I'm gonna find relationship between uh, VO1 and VPI1 okay then I'm gonna find relationship between VPI1 and VI, VI1 which is the notation here and I'm gonna find relationship between VI VI VI1 and VS so once again I didn't make the animation but please follow my voice carefully here is VO here is VI1 I mean VO1 here is VI1 okay okay if you're on good here we go so the first relationship VO over VPI2 is gonna be equal to uh, so you have to basically use this loop in here and it's gonna be equal to uh, negative GM GM2 multiply for this two parallel resistor here which is RC2 and R2 so you're gonna have a result of uh, negative 172 okay now what's the difference between VPI2 okay VPI2 and what's the difference between VPI2 and VO1 you may see it may seem obvious v pi 2 is the one switch across between here and here okay and v pi v o 1 is the voltage at this point and if it, it's going to be the same okay since we have we know that rx2 is going to is zero uh, so we know that relationship um, so we know this relationship right Next, we find uh, VO1 over VPI1. So VO1 over VPI1, use the same method. GM1, multiply for all of this parallel resistance in here. It's gonna be RC1 parallel with R12, and parallel with R22. Okay, this is basically the um, Thevenin, the the R seven and two, okay, and finally parallel with R pi two, okay. Plug off the number in, you're gonna have uh, negative twenty two point eight. Next, we find the relationship between V pi one and V i one. So V pi one, which is the voltage from here to here, and VI1 which is the one just at this point they are not equal why they are not equal because you have this loading effect in here that's why they are not equal so in order to find that you just have to use one just divide the rule uh, 
do a little bit analysis, then you can have the number to be 0 0.22. Whew. Okay. Um, we also can find the input, the input resistance. Of, we can find the input resistance uh, of our circuit, okay, of our amplifier. It's going to be uh, R1 equal to 6.4 kilo ohms. And finally, the relationship between VI1 and VS, just have to use one just divide the rule. Um, it's gonna be 0 0.52. Now you know all of this number, you multiply them all together, you have the final answer is 449. 449 for your open loop game. You can also calculate that in uh, decibel using this equation. Okay, just 20 multiplied by log of open loop gain, you can have the decibel value to be 53 decibel. Okay. Uh, finally, in here we can find the total input resistance. Total input resistance of open loop gain. Okay. So total input resistance of the basic amplifier. Oh, oh sorry. Total input resistance of the basic amplifier or open loop input resistance. And I'm gonna define that input resistance including the the source resistance of five kilo ohms. And that is gonna be R I equal to R S plus uh, R I one plus R V one. I mean parallel R V one. That's gonna be equal to 5.4 kilo ohms. And the output resistance of the basic amplifier or the open loop output resistance is gonna be R two parallel R C two. Okay, and it's gonna be 2.4 kilo ohms. Whew. So that was a lot of work, but what do we know so far? So I've, I've put up the basic diagram for Shiri Shunt uh, configuration in here. And there are a few parameters that I found. If you compare this figure into the, to the previous lecture, you saw that I have moved the, the IRF here, and I will explain later. Because now I want to be able to totally calculate the true uh, the true input resistance with the source also but anyway so first we found the open loop gain and we found that to be 449 we also found the input resistance of the uh, basic amplifier and we also found the output resistance the input resistance in this case is 10.4 kilo ohms and the output resistance of the basic amplifier is 2.4 kilo ohms. We also found the transfer function, feedback transfer function to be 0.021. Okay. So next we need to find the closed loop gain. Okay. So in here I give you an easy way. Okay. An easy way is you basically close loop, close loop gain. Uh, you can estimate that to be one over beta v, and that's probably uh, sum of R F one, R F two over R F one. Then you can have quickly estimate. You can quickly estimate your close loop gain. However, let's go deeply a little. So we can calculate first the loop gain, which is beta. AV is going to be equal to 9.4. We also can calculate the mid band closed loop gain using this equation, right? So it's going to be uh, it's going to be AVF equal to AV over 1 plus loop gain. That's going to be 43.1. You can calculate that in dB, and it's going to be 32.7 dB. 
So let's take some notes here. So if you look at this equation, loop gain need to be force loop gain need to be positive uh, for it to for this one to be uh, a negative feedback. Negative feedback means yeah the closed loop gain is gonna be less than the open loop gain. If this is if this this term is negative, then if it's less than one, uh, if it's negative and less than one, uh, the magnitude is less than one, you can actually have a closed loop gain larger than the open loop gain. Also, the loop gain need to be large enough that the feedback is significant. Okay, so if I have a, a loop gain is 0 0.01 then I almost have no feedback because the difference like the denominator is almost equal to 1 so there's no difference between the mid band closed loop gain and the open loop gain so you can adjust the amount of feedback basically just by changing beta okay and in order to change beta you just have to adjust the value of RF1 and RF2 in the feedback path so this is the elegance of this design because usually in the past you have to go back and try to figure out and change a bunch of things in the basic amplifier but now you can easily tune your your feedback amplifier just by a couple of resistors so in the case of a large loop gain we can estimate uh, the closed loop gain to be inverse of the feedback transfer function so I say in here so if we use the estimation approach we can see that uh, it's gonna be 33.6 decibel which is about one decibel off from the actual number so using estimation is not bad okay so what do we know so far in here uh, we know the closed loop gain to be 43.1 Volt over volt. How about the uh, input resistance with feedback, and also the output resistance with feedback? The input resistance with feedback is gonna be um, equal to this RI, the input resistance of the basic amplifier, multiply for one plus loop gain or one plus beta EV. Use this is from the brief previous uh, video that I, I gave you guys. So basically, the input resistance with feedback will increase by a factor of one plus beta AV. The output resistance, however, will reduce by the same factor. So you have RO divided by one plus beta AV, and you're gonna have it to be 0 0.23 kilo ohm. So we have finished the mid band analysis. We know we know how our gain our amplifier would behave uh, when it the frequency is just about right. But we have not considered the frequency response of our amplifier yet. And you can see there's so many frequency dependent components in this circuit. Right? There's a bunch there's six different capacitors. So the good approach is first you we're gonna we're gonna analyze the low frequency portion, then we're gonna analyze the high frequency portion, okay, uh, of each capacitor to figure out poles and zero for each capacitor. Then at the end, what we can do is we can combine them together and figure out the body plot. So that is the easy way. The more difficult way. <laughs> is when you actually try to write the transfer function for this whole thing and good luck with that if you're good at math uh, but let's let's try not to do it the hard way so first of all that's summary what we have here so we have input output capacitor right c1 c5 we have emitter bypass capacitor c3 and c4 we have interstage coupling capacitor, which is C2, and we have feedback coupling capacitor. Uh, if we use a gray short circuit technique, uh, 
uh, on one capacitor at a time, we can find the low frequency pulse. Um, then, after I make a mistake in here, we can actually find both uh, by analyze pulse and zero, like like equally. We can find off the pulse. We can find off the zero. But then we can compare uh, and find the dominant low frequency pulse or zero um, to be yeah to be the highest frequency one. I'll explain that later. Oh, so regarding the gray show technique, basically you have to work on each capacitor separately. So for each capacitor that you analyze, this is what you do. You are gonna apply a voltage source Vx at the capacitor that you want to analyze. So replace the capacitor for the voltage source Vx. Uh, what you need to do is you want to find the resistance at that point by dividing Vx for Ix. You short the rest of on of the other capacitor. You're gonna stop drawing the circuit when you see a dependent current source since it will be set to zero. Then you're gonna ground on other voltage source. Okay. Finally, uh, list of the pole that you find in for each capacitor. The largest pole will be the will determine your low corner frequency of the basic amplifier and you can calculate the closed loop low corner frequency by dividing the basic amplifier low corner frequency for 1 plus beta AV I know that's long but so let's get to this first the input coupling capacitor C1 pole frequency so how can we draw the circuit so First, as I, as I say, C1, right, you replace this with Vx. You short the rest and you ground off the other voltage source. So I would draw up to here, but then I would see Gm V pi 1, so I can stop drawing from here. Okay? I can stop drawing from here. Uh, doesn't matter, set that equal to 0 anyway. Then, when I draw up to down here, I bypass this R1, I get to here, this VO is ground, all of this is short, so then what is remaining is I'm going to have this connected to RF1 parallel with RF2, which is actually equal to R1, uh, the input resistance of the feedback network. So how can we find the pole for C1? The pole for C1, the low, low frequency pole for C1 basically is equal to 1 over RC. Okay, low frequency pole 1 over RC. Not too bad, huh? So we know C, we know the value of C1. How can we find the value for how can we find the value of, of R, which is Rx C1? That's going to be equal to Vx over Ix, right? But here's the trick here. The easy way is you sum everything on, because there's no other current going through. There's just one current going from here to here, right? From this branch to this branch. There's no other way. So the easy way is you sum everything on the left and you sum everything on the right. What I do, what do I have on the left of Bx? I have 5 kilo ohms. What do I have on the right? I have Rv1, which is actually the first feminine resistance that we found. Uh, and I also have um, it's going to be parallel to R pi 1 uh, plus, oh, I'm sorry, it 
Yeah, so RB1 is actually parallel to RI1. Okay, so you can write the equation like that, but you have to figure out what is RI1, and we did that before. But here is a quick reminder use the same method. Um, VI1 is going to be VI1 over I, I pi 1, which is the current going through here. Um, so you can use this equation, it's up to you, but I would not do that. If I were you, I would just basically, I know that uh, IE, the current IE, right? Current IE is um, beta plus 1 bigger than I than, than I be here so if I want to find the sum that sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry if I want to find the sum like basically the, the resistance at this point what I can do is basically I'm just gonna add this r pi 1 and I add this one but multiply for 1 plus beta okay that's some quick trick there you can actually derive that pretty easily um, but anyway so we have this equal to 6.4 kilo ohms <sighs> blocking off the number and we have rxc1 to be 10.4 kilo ohms blocking the number we have the first pole to be 19.2 radian per second so just a reminder, R1 is actually RF1 parallel R2. Now we move to the interstage input capacitor C2. So just do exactly the same method. We put um, a Vx in here. Now we trace on this side. What do we have? We have RC1, right? So we write down. And we saw that in the dependent current source, we stop right there. We trace on this side, we have okay, uh, the second R7 in. And this map is say RB2 or R7 in 2, it's up to us. And it's going to be R12 parallel R22. Then up to here, this is shorted. So the E is shorted and ground, okay. So I can just basically stop right there. So since there's no resistance resistance in here, that's gonna be way easier. So left side, how can I find Rx? Left side plus right side, which is Rb2 parallel R pi 2, 10.7k. Now the pole for C2 will be 18.7 radian per second. So note that there are no RE2 because this one is shorted. Feedback coupling capacitor C6. So I work on this because I just want to go in this flow and I'm coming back to the bypass don't worry. For C6 so I do the same thing. I put Vx in here. I ground. Uh, I shorted the rest. Okay. So if I shorted this, I shorted this. This is Vo. Okay. I shorted everything. Then to, 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 to I work up to here. Then I see. I work up to here. But then I see. Uh, Gm. GM2 V pi 2 and I stop right there I set it to 0 so in here I will have so what do I have in here I have uh, C2 I'm gonna be grounded right and second one I'm gonna have R2 which is actually sum of RF and R1 and R2 so left side, right side, adding together 9.7k. The pole for C6 is 20.6 radian per second. Now we are moving to the output coupling. So we put a Vx, a 
the output coupling capacitor there shorted everything out working slowly to this side when you until you see that GMB pi you stop so you're gonna have R2 R C2 sorry then you're gonna have R2 which is sum of R1 and R2 so the resistance RXC5 is gonna be the sum of these two guys oh I'm sorry the resistance R XC5 is going to be parallel of these two guys because there's nothing on the right, there's only one thing on the left. So it's going to be RC2 parallel RF1 plus RF2, which is going to be 2.4 kilo ohms. So now we have the pole for C5 is 41.6 radian per second, and finally we are moving to C3. And gonna be C4 also, which is the bypass capacitor. So, up to now, I think you know how to draw this. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put it there without explaining. But for the bypass capacitor, it's a little bit tricky. We cannot just use the rule. Uh, left and right like adding left and right right it's not like a coupling capacitor so let's let's work it out slowly um we have so we know that of course like an an rex is gonna be equal to vx over ix right basically um so we have okay now we need to find what Vx is equal to. So, so Vx equal to the voltage. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Vx equal to. Uh, so it's gonna be equal to the voltage at not E minus the voltage across this R1 here. So the voltage across R1 is I1 multiply R1 right and the voltage at this point is basically equal to it's gonna be negative because I'm going through this loop and down to the ground okay so negative I pi 1 multiply for let's see what resistance we see when we go from here to here okay oh first we have r pi 1 then plus rs parallel rp1 so that's why we have negative i pi 1 plus r pi 1 I mean multiply r pi 1 plus rs parallel rp1 so at this node here, if we use K curve current law, okay, I believe uh, we're gonna have I x equal to I x, okay, coming in minus I e one, so I x coming in minus I e one coming out. Um, plus i pi 1 coming in plus gmv pi coming in and sum is of all of that is going to be zero right so if i arrange this i can find an expression for i pi 1 so at node e prime e like e prime in here I have I E1 coming in minus I X coming out minus I1 equal zero. So I'm gonna have I1 if I rearrange rearrange this I can have I1 
equal i1 minus ix that's gonna be equal to ix minus vx over re1 so vx can become vx equal to minus i pi 1 multiply for r pi 1 plus rs parallel v1 minus i1 r1 anyway i'm not gonna read this it's annoying basically i pick this equation here bring it down here it's the same what i do is i have an expression for i i right i mean i1 so i replace this term into this i1 so now i have this terms get that i also have an expression for uh i pi 1 so i plug this whole thing in here now i have this and now look at this term in here i only have vx i have vx i have ix and the rest of them are constant either r pi which we calculate or gm which we calculate or some resistance so if i rearrange all of this i can actually find relationship between my vx and my ix and i can calculate that to be 0 0.2 kilo ohms after that i plug in the number and i have the pole for the bypass capacitor c3 to be 100 radian per second all right let's go to final one now we have the now we're gonna move to the emitter bypass capacitor c4 okay this is gonna be a lot easier actually because we have done um we have done the difficult part um for c4 we don't have any loading effect from uh from the, the feedback path so we do the same thing okay um basically we can find uh, rx c4 to be 0 0.7 kilo ohms and we're gonna have the pole for this c4 to be 28.5 radian per second now for the low frequency zeros okay now we have the c1 c2 and c5 they are basically in the same signal line and they will give uh, zero at uh, omega equals zero since we have like the equation impedance is this so first thing that we know is uh, that zero for one two and five will be zero for the emitter bypass capacitor c3 and c4 uh, the zero it will give zero when the impedance of this this here and this go to uh, go to infinity so basically we just have to find a frequency that make this happen so likewise we have the bypass capacitor it will give zero when uh, uh, this whole branch okay uh, parallel with this one go to infinity uh, so if we give zero so to find the zero for this capacitor we have to find which term that make this go to infinity so for the bypass capacitor uh, so let's write down uh, we want to make this into infinity right so we have to write down what it is in terms of frequency so we have uh, zce over uh, parallel re which is this and this and you're gonna have re over one plus this is j omega rece so let's go to infinity when s equal 
minus 1 over R E C E okay because this term will go to 0 if this happen so then you can calculate your um, then you can calculate your uh, 0 for capacitor C3 to be 1 over RC but R will be RE1 C3 that's going to be 4.3 radian per second and same thing happened for the capacitor C now for the feedback capacitor 0 for this okay we need to uh, to write this branch one more time and we, we need to write this branch one more time with everything else shorted out okay with R2 equal to RF 1 plus RF2 so if we know that uh, so if we can see the relationship between VO and V pi 2 and that's gonna be GM1 V okay well, actually I'm sorry GM1 multiply for multiply by uh, C2 parallel with uh, these two things in here okay that is the impedance of C, of C6 plus R2 so GM multiply by these two in parallel you do all of the math just by yourself I'm not gonna intervene you're gonna have this equation so you have to find a term for s that make this whole thing go to infinity so this whole thing go to infinity when this go to zero so basically when this happen and you can find that the zero for c6 is minus 1 over c6 uh, sorry there's no minus uh, equal to 1 over c6 r2 plus rc2 yeah the 0 for this uh, so you plug in off the number it's gonna be 20.6 in per second okay here is the important slide so you put in all the number that you found. I mean, you did a lot of like math and plug in equation and figure out number in here. So you found that. What did, what do you find here? You you found you found the gain. You found the the loop gain or maybe uh what's that called? Yeah, you found loop gain. You found transfer function. You found the closed loop gain also. You know the low frequency pole. You know the you know the low frequency pole. You know the low frequency zero, and these are zero and poles for open loop. So you don't know what is the value for for closed loop, right? So first of all, you need to construct a body plot of the open loop. In order to do that, you look off this number. And since this is analysis for low corner frequency, I mean low frequency, you found the largest low frequency, largest low frequency, uh, or the large, in this case, it's going to be a dominant pole. Okay. This dominant pole has the largest frequency among all of these. And this is a body plot that I use MATLAB to plot it out. Even though, I mean, it's not a very smooth. Line. I mean we have a bunch of zeros in here also uh, but in general in general you can see the train right you don't have to plot every single pole or every single zero because they eventually cancel them out you just have to pick the dominant pole then you plot the body plot according to the dominant pole so here is your corner frequency then after that decrease okay so how can we find the uh, corner frequency low corner frequency for uh, closed loop 
So in order to do that, you def you divide the open loop low corner frequency of one plus beta a b, which is ten point four, and you're gonna have the um the closed loop low corner frequency to be ten uh what's that around ten radian per second. Okay. So in here once again you can see how uh basically when you know of the number um or you can adjust this number so that you can have your gain reduce to 23.7 dB but then your low corner frequency is going to be lower so you expand the bandwidth on this side a little bit okay now how can you find the high frequency portion of your amplifier so since the high frequency response is mostly due to the internal capacitor you can substitute the HyperPi model uh, for the version that have C mu and C pi, and you can short on of the coupling capacitor and by emitter capacitor. Why? Uh, the reason is uh, so for high corner frequency, usually in that case, at that high corner frequency when you design on of the bypass and coupling capacitor is already shorted okay so you can basically short them out you have to include the loading effect okay and finally you have to finish uh, by finding the high frequency, frequency pole in zero using the gray show open circuit method okay so this is called an open circuit method uh, why do we call it open circuit method? That means um, so you place a VX in here. You do the same thing, nothing different, but on up the other capacitor, you open it and you stop where you see a GMB pi. Okay. Um, probably I want you to work out this analysis by yourself, and I have the text in here. Um, but anyway, you do the same method. Uh, I want you to do the same method. Um, the pole, the pole for the high, the high frequency, the high frequency is exactly the same as one over RC. You just have to find, you know, the C pi one I gave it to you, which is 15 picofarad. You just have to find the RX C pi one from this circuit in here so if you work out of that you can have your first pole to be seven um, seven times ten to the seven radian second so for C mu one so now you do the same thing you put a VX in here you open the rest Okay, you work on the analysis and I will save this for your uh, you have to go through this later but we have been over one hour but anyway at the end after you find the uh, CX mu 1 uh, you plug in the number you can have 5.2 uh, multiplied by 10 to the second per second you do same thing for C pi two. It's gonna be one point three two multiplied by ten to the eight. Uh, that's gonna be your third pole. And finally, your fourth pole is um, C mu two. Okay, which is gonna be six point four times ten to the six. Okay. How about the zero? Uh, so first of all, zero for uh, C pi one and C pi two are infinite, and the zero for C mu one 
we can calculate it as gm1 over c mu1 and that's going to be 3 times 10 to the 10 and 0 for uh, c uh, for c, c pi 2 is going to be gm2 over c, I mean c mu2 so it's going to be gm2 over c mu2 equal to 1.5 multiplied by 10 to the 10 so now since we have all the information we can construct our body plot so as you can see we have four high frequency pole we have four high frequency zero so in order to uh, construct your body plot we just have to find a frequency a dominant pole in previous uh, top like, like section for low frequency we find the highest frequency pole I mean the highest poles for to be the to be the low corner frequency however for high frequency you need to find um, the lowest the lowest poles to be the dominant poles so where is the lowest value which is that is 6.4 times 10 to the 6 so that's going to be our uh, the, the, the dominant pole for high frequency case so in order okay if I plot so I plot that in here and this is the high frequency okay so the gain is the same when it hit the dominant pole it start reducing 20 dp per decade okay um, when you have when you want to find the, the feedback high corner frequency you basically want to multiply this high corner frequency for this number because you want to extend this so you multiply this okay and that is uh, multiply this number for 1 plus beta EV so this new high corner frequency or the high corner frequency with feedback or the closed loop high corner frequency is going to be 6.7 times 10 to the 7 all right so that's it for shiri shun today uh yeah it took me a while to prepare for this lecture and it was not easy but anyway i hope you guys are fully equipped for for shiri shunt um, so probably i can try to wrap up uh, negative feedback uh, within this week maybe we can move to and maybe we can move to positive feedback also so hope you guys have a good one i'll see you guys later